Hi there, welcome to Ben's Astrophotography. This is the fourth video of my detailed narrowband processing series. If you haven't watched the, the previous three videos, please use the shortcut on the upper right corner to check them out. Highly recommended. In this video, I will talk about phase 3, star removal, and phase 4, SHO combination. Let's start. There are lots of star removal tools on the market, some paid and some free. The best tool I've ever used so far is Starnet++. First of all, it's free. Plus, it has both Windows and OS X versions. And even better, it has a plug-in for Pixing site on Windows. And that's the version I'll show you today. The most, most, most important thing about Starnet++ is you should always run it on stretched images. So this is our first step here. Stretch all three narrowband masters using histogram transform in PixInsight. Okay, let's start from where we left off last time. So these are the three files I created from last phase. I used to use these uh, suffixes like underscore decon underscore MLT to show that I have done the deconvolution and the MLT. So in that, I always save as new files. So when I think that on certain phase I need to come back and redo from there, uh, I can just grab the file and uh, move on. I don't need to do everything from scratch. Okay, now let me drag and drop this into Pixing site. Close this window. Stretch basically means to magnify the signals on the image so that we can see it. Now it's pitch dark. If I do a on-screen transfer like this, you see, uh, it comes, it pops up. But this screen transfer function is really just some temporary on-screen changes. It doesn't change uh, the pixels on the image at all. If I hover around, let's say some bright stars. I, okay, let's see here. You see under there, there's a K reading. It's only like 0 0.0285. It's very small, I can tell. Uh, on the background, it's even smaller, right? Uh, 0, 0 0.0076. So yeah, this means that this image has not been stretched. If the image has been stretched, uh, the, the reading, the K readings on bright spots should be very close to 1, 1 1.0. I know I have done this in the previous video, but let me bring you more details uh, in this one. So here uh, is the screen transfer function. And because this is just a monochrome image, the, only the K bar here is relevant. The other bars are, uh, has the red crosses. Okay, so uh, on the K bar, there are actually three handles. Just like the histogram uh, transformation here, there's a light handle and there's a dark handle or the uh, black and the white, and then here's the mid-tone, okay? So here we have three candles too. Uh, when I did this, the automatic stretch, it uses some algorithm to automatically decide where these three handles should be. Okay, so if we magnify it here, on the white, hand, white side, it's really not moved, it's, uh, it stays there. But on the other side, on the dark side, it moves the dark handle a little bit there and also uh, the mid-tone. And that's why when I say apply this one to the histogram like this, you will see just a two-dimensional presentation of the same, exactly same stretch. To show you how this works, I will activate the S2 image, the histo histogram, and also I will activate this real-time preview. It's purely white because I'm doing double the uh, transformation, on-screen transformation there, and also this uh, histogram transformation. So I will take away the uh, on-screen transformation uh, I'll do this one, uh, take away this. Okay, now, now it's normal. So what we see here, I will scroll my mouse to show you the magnified part. Okay, I'm really magnifying the histogram. The, this is uh, as is histogram, and this will be the to be histogram after this transform. So the as is histogram looks like this. It's very uh, low resolution. 
the dark and the mid-tone is really close, while the light handle of the histogram change is stays there uh, at the end, which means that I do have some pitch black spots on this image, which uh, Pixie Insight thinks I should get rid of, but I already have something overexposed. It doesn't think I should clip there. Just to show you how this is, I'll move the black handle a little bit. You see, when I go there, a lot of, a lot of the uh, pixels will show white, but if I clip more, it will be darker, okay? And also the mid-tone, it decides which value is in the mid-range of the, uh, the final image. So if it goes to the left, to the dark side, the whole image gets brighter. And if it goes right, the image gets darker. Okay. And also, if we move this bright handle. So let me show you this way. If I move it all the way there, the whole image will be overblown. Okay, now let me do it on the HRFA master because this is usually the best master we have. And I will do this again. I will do the on-screen transfer and drag this same setting to the histogram transformation. Now I see the pattern and the before and after, but I should use really use HRFA here. Okay, so now I see the to be a histogram like this. And now I drag and drop this histogram transform. Uh, remember, this is a permanent uh, transform. It will change the image itself. I'll drop it here. Okay, now I need to remove this on-screen uh, stretch. Now the image is officially stretched. You can probably see that uh, the permanent histogram uh, transformation will bring this image a lot better. The qual image quality is a lot better than the on-screen stretch. On-screen stretch is just something to show you wh what it is, but it's not really exact. And especially on the noise side, histogram transformation is much better on that. Now HRFI is done. How about the O3 and S2? Should we do the same practice? Uh, do a screen transform and then uh, move it there and copy it there? I would say no. Because remember, we have done normalization in Astro Pixel Processor in phase one. All three masters have been calibrated to a neutral background and a neutral highlights. So now it's definitely more logical to just stretch these three masters with the same parameter, which means, let me take off this. This is what I have done for the, for the H alpha. I'll just drag and drop it to S2 like this, okay, and O3, I do the same. All right, that's done. Next, Starnet++. I will call it from here, Starnet. It's really a easy tool to use. It has only one step. Look at this, drag and drop. That's it. The key in this process is that when you try to do anything, like I just simply clicked somewhere, it seems that the whole thing has freezed. But really, no need to panic. Uh, this is just how this works. It consumes so much uh, system resource so that it doesn't respond to anything. So just wait patiently. And uh, for each frame, it takes around four to five minutes to complete. Let me fast forward this. Okay, it's done. Let's use Ctrl Z and Ctrl Y to see the before and after. Before, after, before and after. Looks pretty amazing, right? Let's look at this part. Before and after. I really like this tool. Let's enlarge, go to some bright stars. Before, you see, on the bright stars, like here, there's some slight artifacts. I can use the clone stamp tool uh, to repair this a little bit, but this is not mandatory. Of course, I have done that for all the three masters. This is H alpha and this O3, and this is S2. Now we are ready for the SHO combination. 
Let's use the script here. And there's something called a multi-channel synthesis. And this is an add-on too. So I use SHOAIP. This script is very straightforward too. Uh, look, it automatically chooses S2, HR file, and O3 for me based on the names of the files. So I have nothing to do here. It's S2 100% for red, HR file 100% for green, and O3 100% for blue. So everything's done automatically. I only need to go to here mixing this one. This is the only tricky part. Some of my friends, they cannot find the button to execute this. Definitely it's not the new picture here. Yeah, just click on the mixing uh, SHO RVB, not, not the AO one, just the SHO one. And uh, there you go. And don't worry about this, it will create a new image. So let's close this one. Okay, this is the combined color image. It looks not bad, right? Uh, of course, it's a bit too green, a very greenish, because the HR file is pretty strong among all three channels. But don't worry, let's deal with it in the next video. Okay, let's wrap up. In phase three, we first stretched three master images with identical settings. The keyword is identical here. Then we apply StarNet++ to remove the stars. And the keyword here is patience. In phase four, we simply use the AIP SHO script and uh, put three masters in their place and run the combination. That's it for today. Hope you like it. By the way, if you don't want to miss out my next videos and you haven't subscribed yet, please do that now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Clear skies.